Hey babies, welcome back. I'm your girl, Nurse Reese, and this is Nursing in the City. Okay, so this video goes out to anyone and everyone who's an Excelsior College nursing student and you are gearing up and getting ready or just want some information about that dreadful exam, the Clinical Performance in Nursing Examination, also known as the CPNE. So I wanna just talk to you about my top 10 reasons why people fail this examination. It's in no particular order, um, but to me, it's all mine. 10 reasons why, okay? So let's just jump right into it. The first reason that I have that the people fail the CPNE is because they do not read the study guide. Flat out. They just don't read the study guide. You know, some people think that they can cut corners and, you know, kind of just cut their way through, you know, this exam. And this exam is, you really just can't do that. You have to read the study guide. You have to know what is expected of you. If you read the study guide, you know exactly what it is that you have to do to pass this exam. This is like an open book exam. You just have to read the study guide. So the top 10 or the number 10 reason why people fail the CPNE is because they just flat out don't read the study guide. Number nine. So on the same tune as not reading the study guide, the number nine reason why I feel people fail the CPNE exam is because people do not read the study guide to comprehend. They just read it so that they can say that they read it and then they go on to the next steps. You really have to read this study guide and understand what is expected of you. And whatever questions that you don't have, you need to get them clarified for you. So it's very important to not just read it, just to say that you read it. It's important to read it and comprehend and understand what you're reading and understand what's expected, excuse me, and understand what is expected of you. Okay, and if you don't ex understand something, then you need to reach out to the school or to whatever outside resources that you, you know, may be a part of to get a better understanding and to have some more clarification. All right, so staying on that same tune, moving on to number eight. My number eight reason why people fail the CPNE is because they only rely on outside resources. They only rely on outside um workshops and outside study guides, outside whatever. They do not go back to the source, all right? So they're relying on these outside things that have nothing to do with the college, right? To teach them everything. And some of these outside resources, they're not there to teach, you know? They're there to explain, I guess, their strategies. They're not there to really teach. They're there to teach what they have. And sometimes they're not even doing that, okay? So my number eight reason why people fail the CPNE is because they only rely on the outside resources, meaning they're not reading the study guide, they're not reaching out to the school, they're not reading the study guide to understand, they're only relying on these outside resources, okay? So my number seven reason why people fail the CPNE is because they only rely on their mnemonics. They find mnemonics online, they memorize them, and that's where it, it stops, that's it. They don't understand the mnemonics. They don't understand why the mnemonics are set up the way that they're set up. They don't understand why they should be doing certain things within these mnemonics. They don't realize that these mnemonics are just tr notes to help trigger you to do something. They may not fully explain everything that you need to be doing within that area of care. And that goes back to reading the study guide. 
right? That goes back to understanding what is expected of you. That goes back to comprehending the study guide. So some people fail because they only rely on the mnemonics and don't really understand the mnemonics. All right, boom, 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 boom. Let's go to number six. My number six reason why people fail the CPNE is because they do not utilize the school. They just flat out do not utilize Excelsior College. They think this is back, you know, 1990, whatever, early 2000s, even the early 2000s into the 10s, you know, when the school really didn't supply any resources. But now the school has everything that you need. You know, even within, you know, them having so many resources, you still may want to reach out to other people, you know, in other workshops and things like that to get, you know, a, an understanding because they don't necessarily break things down 100%, but they do show you how to do things. They do show you um, things that you can and can't do, you know, so the school, they do have the videos, um, you're able, we'll leave it at that. The school does supply a lot of resources and in UR 702 that will help prepare you for this exam. And a lot of people fail because they they don't even know where and you they don't even know how to get to NUR 702. They don't even know the resources that the school has to offer. So that is one of the reasons why I feel people fail. Okay, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. My fifth reason why I believe people fail the CPNE is because they do not schedule. I'm gonna say that again. They do not schedule faculty calls with the school. They don't. And the school, when you schedule those faculty calls, you're able to ask anything that is CPNE related. You can ask any sing, anything. You can go over care plans. There's so much that you can do on these faculty calls. So I'm gonna jump right into number four. The fourth reason why I believe people fail the CPNE is because they don't go over care plans with Excelsior. They do not go over care plans with the school. They don't go over the care plans, they don't go over the um, PCS, excuse me, the PCS um, scenarios, um, samples that are in there that are that pretty much mimic the exams. They don't go over those. They don't do the practice um, care plans and they don't go over them with the school to review them. To me that I feel like that is setting yourself up for failure and it's selling yourself short. You have these free resources that you can be utilizing and the faculty calls are 30 minutes and you can schedule them um, once a week. So these are all the resources that you can be using because you're reaching out to other people who haven't even taken this exam and then going to their workshops and asking questions and they really don't know the answers because they haven't done this program or because they are not the school. So sometimes it's best to just go to the school to get the answer. Like why go to an in-between person or someone who hasn't studied this material, you know? When you can just go right to the source. I don't know. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. I feel like I left one out. So the number three reason on the list of why people fail the CPNE is because they just don't practice enough. They just don't practice enough. They may practice a little bit here and there, but they do not practice enough to where they feel that they are ready. Okay? So to me, just, just straight up not practicing enough, not giving it your all, you know, not living, eating, and breathing it. To me, that's why people fail. Number two, the number two reasons why people fail the CPNE is because they just flat out underestimate the exam. They figure, oh, I've been a nurse for 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30. This test can't teach me anything new. This, I've been doing this, I know what to do. And you know what? They just add, they just may, you know, well, do know what to do in their environment. But in this Excelsior College environment, you have to do it their way because it's literally their way or the highway. And you've paid too much money to play games, right? So just buckle down and do it their way. Do not underestimate this exam. 
whether you're doing a split or if you're doing the um, three-day exam, it's only a few days of your life that you have to do this their way. And as soon as you walk out that door, you can go back to doing what you was doing, how you was doing it, why, when, where you was doing it, how you was doing it, like you was doing it, when you was doing it, how you was doing it for TV. <laughs> okay? But for this exam, just do it their way. Just do it their way. All right? Number one. Drum roll. The number one reason why I believe people fail the CPNE is because they take cancellations knowing damn well they ain't ready. Knowing damn well they ain't ready, knowing damn well they ain't gonna be ready when it's time to get ready and be ready. See, my whole philosophy was, if I stay ready, I ain't got to get ready. I was ready over a month before I took my exam. I was tired at that point. I wasn't burnt out, but I was tired of practicing. Because at that point, it was just practicing. I wasn't trying to learn or anything. I was just practicing. It was like Kobe in the gym. You know, you're out there practicing, you know? I was not there like, AI hey, practice, practice. No, you know, I was practicing at that point. I had a whole month. So I wasn't really nervous and scared when it came time, even though I, you know, you know, life happens and whatever, but ultimately I didn't just like rush into this. I treated it like a little baby. You know, I gave up my life for like a month, two months, and a, um, two and a half months, I think it was about. I think uh, I got it. Well, I got a date in August and I tested. I got, I got a date the second week in August. I tested the first week in October. So that's like a month and some, and some time, you know? I just feel like you really need to give your time, yourself the time to prepare for the exam. You're going to prepare and then you're going to practice and you'll do fine, all right? So for me, that is the number one reason because people take cancellations. Overall, this exam is no joke. But if you buckle down, you put in the time, you do what needs to be done, you can definitely pass. Again, Excelsior provides plentiful of resources. And there are other outside resources as well. And if you do need any help, I'm here. You can go to nycclinicalworkshop.com for you know, um, free videos that we have. If you like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, videos, online care plans, mocks, whatever, you know, I'm definitely here and I can help as well. Um, and again, I've been through this, I've done this. So I know what it takes. I know what it entails. I know the study guide, you know? Um, but overall, you can definitely do this. I'm glad that I did it this way and the way life was set up for me this worked out best for me, but um, you can do it guys. You can definitely do it. What do you guys think? What are some things that you've experienced um, that you've seen around the internet or that you know for a fact, or if you're a re a retester um, or repeat tester, um, well, what do you feel are some reasons why people fail this exam? Is there, is there something that I didn't mention? Um, other than, you know, the, the regular nerves, like we know people fail because of nerves. I guess I could have threw that in there. You know, nerves is a big one, anxiety. Um, but those things don't really have to do with pre preparation, you know? Um, uh, what are some other reasons? I can't think of any other reasons at the moment, but there definitely are other reasons that may not necessarily factor into the preparation. But whether it's preparation or whether it's just whatever, let me know, all right? Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to catching you guys in the next video.